What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Friday, might even be Saturday depending on where you're watching. I know this video is coming out very late today, but as you guys know yesterday, I was traveling today. I am finally back in the studio. However, I, I'll be honest, I didn't really miss very much. There's not much happening. Bitcoin's only up about 0.48% since yesterday. Now, we did say that usually the Fridays tend to end on a green day, although this is somewhat lackluster to say the least. But having a look at what happened, we basically had this dump and we've pretty much just been going sideways ever since. But I do have something really interesting since the price is kind of boring right now. There's one specific statistic actually related to Bitcoin that I don't see anyone else talking about and I found it really interesting. So I thought today we'd do a little bit of a, you know, kind of rapid fire, really quick video because it is late in the day. So if that sounds good to you, you know what to do. Also, if you're not subscribed to the Crypto Zombie channel, well, what are you waiting for? We do this every single day. Now let's dive in. Let's have a look. Obviously, give it a quick refresh live 69.1 percent on coin market cap so we know coin market cap does factor in a lot of illiquid coins dead coins things of that nature right so this is really high right now bitcoin is definitely uh it's definitely still moving up percentage wise. Having a look at the big gainers today. Oh my goodness, Dragon Coins <laughs> with a whopping one hundred and hundred and forty eight thousand dollars worth of volume. So uh yeah, be careful with that one, guys. Wan Chain up again, 15%, GX, Aurora, ABBC, Ethereum Classic, NEM, Bytecoin, Bytem, and Grin, all doing quite well today. Hopping over here, having a look at the real 10 volume, it is sitting around 618 million, a little bit lower than we'd like to see, right? But that being said, we do have the Fear and Greed Index still showing fear, but... Here's the situation. We're going to get through this super quick, so stick with me, and then we're going to get to the really fun part. So obviously, you guys have been looking at these charts with me for a while, right? We were coming up here on this trend line. We fell into the danger zone. Should we panic? Well, obviously, having a look, we did check out yesterday. We have been supported by the $9,375 level. If we do fall lower, we do have these red zones and this really deep red zone. And if we were to go below $8,800, well, then we might sort of being a bit of a pickle, right? Because then we might actually follow this trend downwards and continue our... Uh, yeah, well, that, let's not talk about that right now. Realistically speaking, everybody's freaking out. We're going up, we're going down, we're bouncing around. Guys, we're just in this giant triangle. It's really all it is, right? We just keep, you know, touching the resistance, coming down to support. Right here, okay, there's sort of that middle trend line, but basically we are just bouncing around. You can see overall volume is declining. We do know as volume declines, as we get closer and closer to the end, we are looking for a massive breakout or breakdown, and I'm talking way bigger than a 10%. I mean, we're looking at putting in some big numbers potentially, right? I do want to have a look over here on the daily at the EMA ribbon. Now you will notice, unfortunately, we have fallen out of it. However, I do want to point out one thing, one thing a little bit positive, right? So we obviously had the EMA uh, ribbon flip right here when we popped above it on April 1st. But if you do go back to the previous bull market that we had and you look at all the times that we do tend to fall below, um, you know, the EMA ribbon support, you could see when we go uh, lower, we don't really stay there for very much longer. For example, we fell down here. Um, we stayed down there for for about literally four days and we fell 18%, right? And then, but don't forget after that, we then pumped 64%, okay? The other time that we did it right here, uh, let me just uh, get this a little bit bigger so we could see it, um, right? So we fell below right here. Uh, we wicked down about 14%. And then the next time that we pumped up, we pumped up 37%, right? So does that mean that we're going to do that again this time? Well, I'm not saying that history will repeat itself 100%, but what I am saying is we have fallen below it. So let's have a look and see how far we've fallen below this time, all right? So currently about 6%. So does that mean that now we are looking for a subsequent pump? It is possible, right? We have done it in all the bull markets of the, or I should say the bull, uh, the runs, right, up in the past. Now, currently on this one, I did replace the 20 EMA with the 21 exponential, which is this uh, sort of really neon green line here. And the reason that we've been looking at it is because that is sort of the support that a lot of people are looking at on the weekly. And currently that's sitting at around $8,977. So we could basically just say $9,000, right? So that still is in the cards. We can't ignore that. Having a look over here at Market Cipher. Now we did put in a green dot. However, I genuinely like to see, uh, you know, two of them, right? Snake eyes for the confirmation, kind of like we did right around here, you know, where then we pumped up to, uh, what was that? The 10th, that was almost $11,000 before we fell back down again. So keep your eyes on it though. Um, I would prefer to see two 
you know, and then that would be a lot more confident to maybe put in a, uh, a potential long, not financial advice, but that is something to keep in mind. One thing a lot of people are pointing out once again is Bitcoin dominance does just keep getting higher and higher. It's actually 71.61% over on trading view. You can see we are well above the levels that we had back on December 4th. Uh, if you want like a, di a sort of a different view of it, you can just go over to coin market cap. You can see Bitcoin used to sort of bounce around in that 85% to, uh, you know, almost 95% region until we had that very, very speculative, uh, very speculative alt season in 2017, right? Now, are we going to be having an alt season again? Big topic. I do want to talk about that because there was an interesting article that came out discussing alt season in a really practical manner. I'm going to do that in uh, a little bit later in the video. But first, I want to talk about this. This is something I don't hear people talk about, and this is called the sharp ratio. Now, this is something that's actually used very commonly in traditional markets, but I really haven't seen a lot of people refer to it in Bitcoin. Right. So basically, you could see right here that the sharp ratio is used to help investors understand the return of an investment compared to its risk. The ratio is the average return earned in excess of the risk free rate per unit of volatility or total risk. I know. Stay with me on this one. Oh, by the way, if this is confusing you, there's this really good video right here. It's, it's just under two minutes. I'll drop the link below. You guys can check it out. But basically, long story short, you know, we don't have to go through the math right here. They say subtracting the risk free rate from the mean return allows an investor to better isolate the profits associated with risk-taking activities. So generally, the greater the value of the sharp ratio, the more attractive the risk-adjusted return is. So you guys ready? Let's actually plot Bitcoin and have a look and see where it compares to some other common uh, you know, investments on the sharp ratio index. So you ready? Here we go. So Having a look right here, you'll notice that, well, first of all, you guys do know that the higher the sharp ratio, the better, right? So ideally, if you're looking to invest in an asset, you would want a ratio that's sort of more than two, and you want to avoid uh, you know, investments that are less than one. So the great majority of popular financial instruments tend to have a ratio between one and two, meaning there's a significant amount of risk associated with any potential rewards. We can have a look right here. So you can see comparing it, Bitcoin has maintained a sharp ratio between two and 3.5 since 2014. 14. Very rarely has it ever dropped below two, but it has peaked all the way up at, as high as 4.06 at the height of the 2013 bull run. And currently it's sitting at around 3.2, right? So I know what you're saying. Okay, so it's down. Yes, it's down somewhat since its absolute highest value, but it is still higher than US stocks, US real estate, bonds, gold, emerging currencies, and oil have ever been, period. Okay, so beyond this point, you know, even when Bitcoin is experiencing these crazy, crazy losses, not even like what we're seeing today. I'm talking like massive, you know, 84% dips like we saw, uh, you know, obviously in 2018. Um, it still maintained a higher sharp ratio than all of these other assets, right? So I thought that was really cool. You know, we're sitting here all doom and gloom. Bitcoin's going to zero. It's dumping. And like we're still doing better and have been doing better than all of these other assets ever have period. And if you've been watching this channel for quite some time, you're probably tired of looking at this chart, but it's one of my favorites because it really just simply expresses anywhere in this blue zone, had you bought Bitcoin, you would be up. Let me show you where you would be down. And we really have to zoom into basically just recently. And all that it is, is this little bubble right here, basically from, you know, the end of, uh, basically the end of November, December, January, uh, and then, you know, some spots in February and March, there's this little, little, tiny, tiny wick that we had here in April, and then obviously just the, uh, you know, correction that we've been having from when we basically went up to 14,000. So, you know, zooming out once again, you know, people that say that, you know, Bitcoin is a terrible store of value, Bitcoin is a terrible investment, like, really, guys, really, because I don't have to really dig very deep in the data to, to, to see that it clearly is. So that's just something I wanted to point out. Um, I will check this out. This is pretty cool too, kind of on the same vein. Miguel says, a friend loaded $16 worth of Bitcoin in our old SMS-based Bitcoin wallet service back in 2014. It's still there, 0.3 Bitcoin. He's withdrawing it today and it's now worth $2,800. And $70. The easiest way to hodl is to forget about it. I like the uh, men in black reference, but just don't forget about it where you forget your private key because then it's lost forever. But, you know, set it, forget it. Buy a Bitcoin, put it in cold storage, come back in 10 years, and uh, hopefully, you know, um, it'll be a lot 
more than it was before. I certainly think it will be. But, you know, we do talk about price a lot on this channel. I mean, it's, it seems to be a very common, common thing to attract investors. Price, right? We love talking about price. But fundamentally speaking, once again, hash rate breaking, literally, has hit all-time high again. You can see right here, we are up to 83, uh, I believe it's 83 million terahashes, 83.5 million terahashes. So this is just showing, showing that the network is growing. Miners are securing the network. You're seeing these guys, they're not capitulating, right? They're actually going out, turning on the miners, buying, uh, you saw Bitmain just bought uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of the new seven nanometer chips, right? So that was pretty interesting. And just to kind of point it out, you know, like Ron Paul says, the Federal Reserve should not exist, right? Just fundamentally speaking, looking at Bitcoin's value proposition, you know, look at what these guys do. They create money out of thin air and it destroys the value of our earnings and our purchasing power, aka the dollar, right? By manipulating interest rates, it creates manic booms and bubbles in the economy, which must without exception become painful economic busts. So it's kind of funny by default, if you know that the dollar is losing two to 3% annually, I mean, even though this really isn't how markets work, I mean, you technically need somebody to actually buy, right, to move the price. But, you know, theoretically speaking, if Bitcoin was to just stay at where it is and the dollar kept depreciating, well, wouldn't that create more value for Bitcoin anyway? Also, guys, don't forget, May, we do have the halving event. Yep. Oh. See, don't forget about that one. Oh, by the way, did you know that prior to 1913, Americans kept 100% of their paycheck? More you know, guys, more you know. Also, guys, have you seen this Bitcoin? Actually, it's a crypto bird feeder. So basically, you could just go over here. I'll drop it below. And, you know, you could send Litecoin, Nano, uh, Bitcoin or Dogecoin, and it will feed the birds. So there you go. Have fun with this. It's a live stream. It's been running for quite some time. Uh, I think currently right now it is in night mode. Not or It's dark. Not much is happening right now, but check it out. Send the guy a tip. Could be fun. So also, guys, Mike Novogratz, the CEO of Galaxy Digital Holdings, we know he is a bit of a permable, but he has stated, as you can see, institutions are slowly and steadily moving in. And he does say, you know, like we saw, uh, where was it, back here on the, uh, you know, dominance when we had this crazy, you know, basically alt season right here, essentially he says what we did in 2017 that was crazy. People got unrealistic expectations on how fast the blockchain revolution, the crypto revolution is actually going to happen. Guys, Bitcoin came out only 10 years ago. You know, gold's been around for 5,000. Relax a second here, right? You got to give some time. You got to give them more runway before we give them the thumbs up or the thumbs down, right? But currently speaking, you know, having a look, it's been doing pretty well in its first 10 years. So I just wanted to kind of kind of just throw that out moving forward. But, you know, talking about alt season, right? Because, I mean, still people are asking, you know, when are the altcoins going to have their, their next run? Was 20, 2017 a one a one-time only thing? Is that never going to happen again? Well, Max Kaiser, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with him. Now, he is basically a Bitcoin maximalist. So obviously, you do have to understand his perspective of where he's coming from. But basically, he gave a prediction. And as part of his prediction, he said that the price of Ethereum is going to drop as low as $90, this would represent a 46.4% fall from where it is. And the reason that he's saying this is because he thinks that we're going to go back to the levels of Bitcoin dominance before the crazy speculative 2017 bubble. Let me know what you guys think about that. Do you think we are going to get those crazy high levels for Bitcoin dominance again, up to 80%, 90%? I mean, don't forget, they do say that if you do subtract a lot of the dead coins and the stable coins, Bitcoin dominance is almost already up around 90%, right? Um, but the issue continues to divide crypto cryptocurrency, and of course, the, the the community, right? A lot of people are still hopeful, you know, and then you see people, you know, all toxic Bitcoin maximalists, and all these people do is buy shit coins. It's very tribal, and really the space is so small. I don't know why we're fighting each other. We should really be helping each other to build the space up, but that's for another topic. That's not really what I wanted to get into today. You know, he says, with interest in Bitcoin alternatives seemingly falling, along with prices relative to Bitcoin, uh, basically, this calls for a renewed alt season. Some people are thinking that, but it does look like if Bitcoin's price continues to go up, as well as the dominance, I guess the dominance probably is more important than the price right now because the price, ha price has been, you know, declining. But the thing is, is last time we saw the altcoins hit their high, their peak, which was in January of 2018, we saw the price of Bitcoin go down, but the price of altcoins go up. We're not seeing that this time. When Bitcoin is getting hit, we're seeing altcoins get hit too. Not all of them, but the majority of them, right? So this means that we're not doing the same thing that we did late 2017, early 2018. This is definitely a different, a different market, right? But the one thing I wanted to point out too, 
Looking at this article from Crypto Briefing, you can see right here, they say, what coin? These old cryptos did it first. And it's interesting to have a look. Now they are showing, you know, look at look at what the top coins used to be. I don't know what year this is from, but you can go on CoinMarketCap and go to historical data. There's a, you know, you could just go through all the different years. Look at this. Number one was Bitcoin. Number two was Litecoin. Three was XRP. Ripple at the time wasn't even called XRP. That was just the ticker. Namecoin, Peercoin, Feathercoin, Novacoin, Primecoin, Terracoin, Infinity Coin. Have you ever heard of any of these? Um, Pure coin and feather coin, um, I think, are probably the more common. But yeah, I mean, these coins are like nowhere to be found. And you can see right here, you know, Digicash actually came before Bitcoin, but Bitcoin was able to replace that because that wasn't actually a true crypto. Pure coin, early proof of stake, right? Colored coins were tokenizations before Ethereum. Dev coin actually used to, uh, you know, reward users basically like BAT uh, before Steemit. And then they say, are these classic coins still relevant? I mean, realistically, guys, not really. No one's really paying attention to them. So, you know, when you go over and you have a look at coin market cap today and you're scrolling down and you're having a look at a lot of these coins, especially the ones when you start going to the, the you know, the third and fourth and fifth page, I mean, you got to ask yourself, do you really genuinely think that these coins are going to be around? I mean, I understand that behind this, listen, there's hardworking dev teams. I don't take it away. There's a lot of hardworking developers on all of these projects. And that's exactly why when people ask me, am I a Bitcoin maximalist? I say, no, I'm not. Um, I hold primarily mostly Bitcoin, but I do believe in innovation. And I know, you know, one of these days we're just going to have this project that's just going to create something really phenomenal. And that is the fun, trying to really find that project, right? Trying to get invested in that before it blasts off. But the question is, which one of these is really going Going to be, you know, the next one to really take off. So that is definitely part of the fun of the game. But, you know, ending on some positive news, I want to keep today's video really, really concise and to the point. Uh, basically, you have over in Portugal, the tax authority says that crypto trading and payments are finally tax free. So that is a bit of achievement, if you ask me. Also, we have Samsung coming out with some good news. So, you know, initially they only had support for Ethereum and ERC-20 tokens. And then in uh, this month, they did add Bitcoin. Now they've added BNB as well as some stable coins. So you can see they have uh, TrueUSD, Maker, USD coin as well. So now all in all, you have 33 digital coins that are now supported by the smartphone. And finally, to end on some pretty cool news, I don't know if you guys out there uh, watch Star Trek. Uh, I know it's always like a battle. Like I, I see a lot of people star wars versus star trek i'm actually a fan of both i like star trek and i like star wars so for me this is pretty cool star trek is introducing cryptocurrency collectibles so they say trekkies will now be able to acquire star trek true digital crypto collectibles six iconic ships from the trek universe that will be digitally minted and cryptographically secured it is going to be an erc 721 and they are going to be using ethereum so you could say it says with the characteristics of true digital ownership blockchain enforced scarcity potential digital loss, destruction, and a limited supply, one can expect these first generation Star Trek digital collectible ships to make very unique collectibles. And guys, we saw what CryptoKitties did, right? One of them sold for like, I don't remember, what was like $160,000, $180,000. So hey, man, Maybe the Enterprise could be the next big uh, Ethereum NFT, right? So that being said, how do you guys like today? Kept it nice and short. I know the video is coming out a little bit late. Hope you are enjoying your weekend so far, right? Let's have a look one more time before we get out of here. Where are we? Uh, 9,682. Wait, are we pumping right now? We are actually having a little bit of a pump as we speak. Uh, do you guys think this is going to turn out to just be like a reverse Bart Simpson? If this turns out to be an upside down Bart Simpson, I'm just going to straight up laugh and be like, wow. Now, if that's not manipulation, what is? But that being said, guys, that's it for me today. I really hope you did get some value out of today's video. Once again, thank you so much for all your...